day. I wrap Stina Flynn and Associates with your Metals Market Wrap-Up, and this is for Thursday the 15th of August 2019, just after 4.30 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Well, mixed day in the metals. Silver broke away from gold today, losing some ground to it. Copper, a small update, but I don't see anything here. Literally uh, two minutes ago, three minutes ago, I was watching the president as he was leaving for New Hampshire, hold one of his impromptu news conferences, and I've given up believing in uh, what he says in terms of the Chinese trade. You know, we could get close and blah, blah. I, I think he uses the stock market as barometer, and if the market is weak in any manner, he tries to talk it up because that's his metric, and I, I'm pretty sure that's where you're at. Do I see China offering anything else? No. They've been lip tight, and I think they've dug their heels in, and that's where they're sitting. In the dollar index, up a little bit today at the expense of a number of the uh, foreign currencies, as you can see. When we take a look at bonds and notes, you also saw that those markets, what? Yields continue to go down as the race is on. Mexico cut its interest rate a quarter point today. It's appearing more and more as though Europe's going to start a bazooka barrage of not only interest rate cuts, but quantitative easing they're talking, 50 billion euro a month coming back on board, maybe buying of equities this time. Remember, you're gonna have Miss Lagarde soon, not yet, but soon taking the helm. Mr. Draghi should get more aggressive now, and I think the board's pushing on that. That could benefit, if you will, the gold market. Gold looks at the dollar to a certain degree, but on its own, this gold has been acting as though it's a safe haven that uh, people are nervous about it. so many things that it's just getting up. I think the interest rate scare is behind a lot of this gold move. You're up $23 this week, and if you tie that to the fact that you've made a new all-time low in 30-year bonds, yeah, you hit that today, you've got 10-year notes sitting at one five and a half, and we're talking, people are already trying to push for a 50 basis point cut from the Fed. I don't see that. I don't think the Fed wants to be ahead of the curve here. I think the Fed's just comfortable letting the market push and then it's sort of getting where it's at. Normally they're ahead of the curve. I don't see them this time doing that. Daily bar chart, consolidation phase. Almost marked by this day right here. This huge volume day. You now have gone two days beyond that day's high. So now, according to my theory of that, even if you take out this high, it's not a bear trap anymore. It would have been had you taken that out uh, on Wednesday or Thursday. Didn't happen. When I look at the momentum, I see because of this, the lower and low, and I have a higher high. Now, some might argue, well, I really still can see the higher highs, higher lows, and you're right, except you can't get away from this down day breaking through that. Whenever you have an outside day and you consolidate, that's pretty much what it looks like. It, it gets void of that stepping ladder effect for a short time and you're there. You still have the bias up in that you're over the 18-day average of closes and resistance climbing slightly each day now in the upper Bollinger Band up to 1551 at this point. In terms of momentum, you still have the embedded reading. So this, to me, rules the day. Whenever both numbers of the slow stochastic momentum oscillator go sideways over 80 for several days in a row or more, I view that as meaning the trend is locked in. Now, when you unlock a trend often, the word is not always, but often, it means if that gets under 80 on a close, the price and the 18-day average are going to try to make a run at each other. It doesn't work every time, but I've yet to see when it's lost that the market just doesn't stall or something. It'll do something in that general area, but more times than not, it's going to make a run at the closest of the key moving averages, which is most often the 18-day average of closes. In GLD, it's the pattern is similar to the futures. You have the embedded reading, the bias is up, same pattern, lower low, higher high. But for this move, here's the difference. Today you're at 144.02. That's the new high of this whole move. This is leading the futures higher with all that it's got. When we come to the gold miners now, they laid down. And as they laid down, they went back to this 18-day average, and they've been playing at it now for two out of the past three days. It can start another leg to the upside by taking out yesterday's high and just not taking out this low of 2381. I think that's 2781. I 
my eyes there. If you take that out, you put back into play the possibility of the upper Bollinger Band as resistance. Right now, the market's just neutral. The swing line is down because you're over the 18-day average. The bias is up, and the market is working off. It hasn't finished it. you got to get this other number under 70 on a closing basis. Then it has worked off being overbought. The gold-silver ratio playing games around its 18-day average of closes, but still favoring gold. As long as you're over that red number, you favor gold. When you get under it, you're favoring silver. Bull markets in gold are often accompanied by silver moving higher with it. It's not always the case, but it is typical on a historical basis. In the silver market, you're at a big resistance number, the upper Bollinger Band. You had that one day, just like you had in the um, gold market, of a big reversal. Different from gold, you went right to the 18-day average, held it, and you've come back to the upper Bollinger Band. That's impressive. Uh, is the market trending? No. It has upside bias. Unlike the others, it's not an embedded market. It's simply an overbought market here. In the copper market, I'll have called this a contra move, a bear market rally, keeping the bias to the downside and working off, past tense again, working off now the oversold condition. Uh, this pattern's not inducive right now to a new trend to the downside. If it were to close over 265, it could actually get bullish. But getting back and over that 18-day average should prove a problem, it's sort of like a market in no man's land. In the platinum market, lower highs, lower lows, you got down right here to that 18-day average, came all the way soaring back in this market back up that day. Yesterday, it started breaking down again, went to the 100-day average, closed under it, which puts into play again the lower Bollinger Band. That's what you hit today. You finished just over it at 842. That number is 841.30, and you are now in oversold territory. Trend down, bias down, hit a downside target, and you got oversold. In the palladium market, the battle is on at the 100-week average of closes. Does this market get to the point where it can hang in there and make a run to the 18-day average? Let's go the other way. Don't make that run, take out this 14, 13, 60 level, and you set up a pattern that if you don't get up and over these highs, you'll have lower highs, lower lows. That'd be bearish. If you cut through the 100-day average, you could be headed to the lower Bollinger Band, but the part of me that's bothered about that is you have to stay in oversold territory that whole ter way. If you do that, you're already in oversold territory. Rough one. There's no reason to be long, and I have yet to find a new reason to be short. Might be the way to sum it. In the dollar index, lower and low, higher high. The dollar is winning as world economies, one after the other, are faltering. Mexico cut its interest rate for the first time in five years today. So the race is on to cut interest rates, and it's not limited to Europe. It's everywhere that's going on. We don't have to cut ours. The market's done it for us. You know, I talk about this and other things, and you get a lot of what I talk about and learn from in our futures trading kit. And we've put together a kit that I think is complete. Complete in the sense that it's made for the person looking to find out about the futures market, not for the person that's already been trading it and they have a knowledge about it. But this goes on and teaches you everything from the chart patterns, exchange brochures, how to work with options in the market, a lot of theory in here, a lot of history in here, like a brochure on the Ex exchange beginnings. You know, I'm so old, I feel like I was there at the beginning. 14 typical chart patterns that you work with. Explaining technical analysis, other brochures that we have here that will explain to you some of the different effects that markets have. Then we have how do you trade options, and the CME group has one, 25 proven option strategies. Cause and effect goes back to how money moves through the economy and the impact that it has on futures markets, the interest rate futures. Then a couple of indicator videos to show you how those things work. Then we're going to take you back and you'll go to the uh, exchange educational brochures with quizzes. So I think that's good and they're always updating those. But we've condensed it all into one place and I think you'll enjoy that you can work with it, go from chapter to chapter. How do you get it? It is free. Simply go to our website under our free offerings and you go to our website right at this page under the free offerings, choose the futures trading kit, and away you go. I'm Ira Epstein. You have a good day, and I'll talk to you.